testing a new vehicle at the moment and um, first impressions so far have been pretty good. We're about to head out for a night of camping and um, Joanna, you drove it up from Auckland yesterday. What are your thoughts so far? I really like it. It's um, really comfortable. That's probably the biggest thing. We've got lumbar support in the seats, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, overall for a truck, it actually drives really nice and smooth, which was on the tar seal anyway. We'll see how it does off-road. So here it is, the brand new Mercedes-Benz X-Class 250D. We're heading out for a night of camping, so let's drop these tyre pressures and get off-road. First thing I say to everyone when you're going off-road is get yourself a good set of tyres. We've opted for a set of General Gabra AT3s, and we've also fitted some underbody protection by Mercedes just to protect the vehicle a bit and give us a little bit more traction. So the X-Class comes as a manual or a seven-speed automatic, and it's a real four-wheel drive where it's a part-time four-wheel drive, and you can put it in four-wheel drive high, it's got a real low range, which is awesome, and uh, it's got hill descent control. So this is a little bit of a steep part, and we'll put it into hill descent control. What that does, it actually regulates the car, and it's not going to let the car go above eight kilometres an hour. And all I have to do is take my feet off the pedals and let the car do the rest. So as you're driving with a hill descent control, you can actually use the cru cruise control buttons to adjust your speed. Um, but at the moment, I've got my feet completely off the pedals. We're sitting there at eight kilometres an hour, and the car is just walking its way down this little steep part of the terrain. So. I don't know if you noticed this, but you know how before I said it doesn't have two cup holders? It does. One looks really shallow, um, but it's just a shallow cup holder. Because I've got my cup in there and it's staying just fine as we rock back and forth. So we've got two. Plus, I actually really love that they've got a water bottle holder in the door and it's angled. And I was like, why is there an angled pocket in the side of the door? And then I slid my water bottle in there and it fits perfectly and it doesn't knock around or make heaps of noise. So I reckon that's what it's for, even if it's not, because it's perfect. So go to yoga in your X-Class, chuck your water bottle there, good to go. So our goal with the X-Class is really to find out what it's like to live with, not just to give you a review about how many cup holders it's got and how comfortable it is to drive on the road, but really to find out what it's like as an overlanding platform. And if you were to buy one, what kind of accessories you could put on it, and what it's like to drive around New Zealand and live out of. So, um, the one thing that I dislike currently is that the parking sensors, which would be, which are awesome when you're parking, because they let you know if you're going to hit a pole or, you know, something else behind you or next to you, and you've got the 360 view so you can see as well. Um, but where we are, we're not in tight, we're not even in tight scrub. We're in a pretty wide open space, but there are some reeds and those reeds are setting off the parking sensors non-stop. And you can't just push the button once to turn it off and it stays off. You push the button every maybe 30 seconds to a minute and that, well, four wheel driving is a bit obnoxious. But if that's the only thing we can find at fault with this car, then there's still you know, absolutely no reason not to get one. Other than it being super comfortable, what is one of your favorite things so far about driving the X-Class? I was gonna be a bit worried, or I was a bit worried, that um, it was gonna feel a little bit out of its element. Why but is that? Just because we've taken such a luxury vehicle, um, like the X-Class, and dropped it into an environment where we used to drive an our, our old Land Cruiser yeah. um, overlanding around New Zealand. But I've got to say, it doesn't feel out of its depth at all. You know, we're sitting here having a normal conversation. I've got one hand on the steering wheel and it's just idling over top of all these, these bumps and things like that. Yeah, know? it has really kind of rocked through everything pretty easily so far anyway. Sand tracks like this. Um, sometimes you come to some steep hills and you really Got it in drive, high range, and momentum is your friend here. That's it, just like that. I really like actually having that camera on the front of the car, and you can actually see where you're going. Built in, we've actually got tyre pressure monitors. So constantly the vehicle's monitoring all four tyres and their pressures, and will warn you if the tyres are getting a little, a little bit low. Because um, we've let our tyres down, that's gone into alarm, but I've managed to turn that one off, but it's still telling me my tyre pressure, and really handy if you're driving a long stretch, especially on long gravel roads and things like that, and you get a puncture and you're not really noticing as it's a slow leak. If it 
sense there's a bit of a discrepancy in the tyres, it'll give you an alarm telling you that you need to check one of your tyres and which one to check. So unlike most dual cabs in the market, the X-Class has actually got coil suspension in the rear, which makes for far superior ride comfort and much better wheel articulation. And you can really feel it in this kind of terrain where the truck is almost moulding itself to what we're driving over. And let's face it, leaf springs are a bit of an archaic design and when it comes to weight carrying, yes, from standard they might be a little bit better, but if you're going to be carrying any serious loads, you're going to have to upgrade your suspension anyway. Well, we discovered that, as is, the X-Class is not king of the dunes. We tried, we tried our hearts out, but we didn't make it up the big hill. But that's all right, because what? We tie it down to mostly the tire size, eh? Yeah, well, because of these big 18-inch or 19-inch rims um, being low profile, and yes, we only let them down to 15 psi. We still put all trains on, and um, Oof, we're going sideways Whee! again. <laughs> <laughs> it's still so much fun, though. I mean, it's still handling this pretty well, really. Um, just stock standard, it does well. But if we added some bigger tires and maybe a little lift we might get that little bit more that we'd like for overlanding. Yeah. And that's really what it comes down to is, you know, you really, in stock form, there's going to be limitations to any vehicle. Yeah. And you have to just figure out what works for you and, and tailor the, the accessories on your vehicle to what you want to do with it. So we've just come off the dunes and we're back on the tar seal. Uh, we had one night of camping. It was a little bit cold, but we survived. Um, being in the cabs, nice and toasty. Uh, sun's out today, so we're going to hit up some gravel, um, but overall on the dunes I thought the stock standard handled pretty well. We could use bigger tires, but we talked about that before. But when you took overdriving, how would you feel about that in the dunes? It was good. It was interesting trying out the different features, you know, how it handles with the traction control off, with it on, putting it on a low range, and you kind of, it, every car you have to get used to it a little bit, of what it feels like. Um, but driving it on the tar seal now, I've got to say it's probably one of the best, if not the best, dual cab I've ever driven on the road. Mercedes have done such a good job at making a corner. The corner is really flat and handles like chunk gravel. <laughs> and um, it just it's a real pleasure to drive on the road. So you drew, drove a Nissan Navara for quite a while last year, so how would you say it compares to that? Look, it's we've got to address that elephant in the room. And yes, it's no secret that Mercedes have taken a Navara and, and kind of use the bones of it. But this is by, definitely not the Navara. The wheel track's wider, it's got Mercedes-Benz suspension on it. It doesn't drive anything like a Navara. It doesn't feel like it inside. It really is a true Mercedes and you expect what you expect from a Mercedes-Benz. Um, so I wouldn't let that put me off. Well, that's enough about us just talking about the car. Let's show you the interior. So this being the power model, which is the top luxury spec, you get your leather seats, front and rear, a full leather interior. This is the nut brown. But the first thing that jumps out at you when you hop into the car is this tablet that's in the center of the da dashboard. And down here on the center console, you've got your control panel for it. They call it the command center. You can turn the wheel to scroll left and right, or you can use a touchpad control. And that's everything from your navigation to your smartphone connect connectivity to going through the user manual, your 360 degree camera, everything like that. Sitting in this cab, it really feels like a real Mercedes um, and it is a really nice place to be for long periods of time. So air conditioning is standard, you've got dual zone climate control. All your switches are all really nice and easy and accessible. You've got your full drive switch, hill descent control, um, center diff lock. All your switches on this side, you've got light switch, 360 degree camera. There's plenty of 12 volt power outlets as well, in the back as well, and you've got USB connectivity and a 12 volt socket in there as well. So now we're in the back of the ute and you can see that there's a decent amount of space. I am a little bit of a shorty however so you would need to put that front seat forward a bit if you were a little bit taller. But overall the seats are actually quite comfortable. The back doesn't recline so on a long trip that might be a little tedious but if you're buying it as a family ute the kids are going to be in the back anyway and it's perfect for kids got plenty of leg room. They've got a 12 volt um, power outlet if you need to plug in their iPads. And also if they're even younger, we've got eye anchor points for car seats in the back. So it's an all round family vehicle. So as far as accessories go on this car, these has got the big side steps, you've got the tinted privacy glass, the 19 inch alloy wheels, and the sports lid. 
And for this trip in particular, we added the General Grabber AT3s and Mercedes-Benz's underbody protection. As far as other 4x4 equipment goes, talking to a few 4x4 suppliers, hopefully in the next six months or so, we should start seeing some bull bars, snorkel, and other equipment for specific for the X-Class. So if you're not after all the luxuries like the Power model has, the X-Class actually comes as a pure version, which has got a black plastic bumper, 16 inch steel wheels and a lot less luxuries inside which is a bit more of a work ute. Comes as a cab chassis or as a well side as well. The next step up from that is the progressive model which comes with a painted bumper, slightly larger wheels and a few more options inside as well. And then it steps all the way up to the power model. From there they all come with a 2.3 litre bi-turbo diesel producing 450 newton metres of torque and 140 kilowatts of power. And coming out in September this year, these are also going to be coming out with a 3 litre V6, which will be very competitive with the Amarok and the Ford Ranger. So having this car for almost a week and driving it on tar seal, gravel roads, sand tracks, sand dunes, and just getting a good feeling for how the car handles, the different features it's got, it's really given me a good insight of how well this car performs on and off road. So the 2.3 litre bi-turbo diesel in this is made by Renault and it gets quite a lot of criticism from people for being a ticking time bomb. It's been by, used by Renault over in Europe for quite a while and as far as reliability goes here in New Zealand, I think only time will tell. But as for driving it on the road, I think it really doesn't lack power, it's really nice to overtake and it pulls up the hills quite well. Let's face it, in this day and age, engines are getting smaller, everyone's worried about fuel consumption and emissions, and Mercedes is just moving with the times. This car gets about 7.5 litres on 100 kilometres, and yes, it's coming out with a 3 litre V6 later on, and that's just due to consumer demand. But if you're not towing really heavy loads or carrying a lot of weight, I really think this engine is sufficient. So as I'm dropping this ute back off at Mercedes, it really got me thinking, have I just gotten distracted by the nice leather interior or the prestigiousness of having the star on the steering wheel? Or has my journey and heritage given me a bit of a bias? But I really don't think it has. If you look at what Mercedes has given us, they've given us the Unimog, the G-Wagon, the G-Class, and now the X-Class. And probably most importantly, Mercedes actually invented the car. <laughs>